Okay, so now I want to give a fairly light and non-technical introduction to manifolds. So, first of all, what is a manifold? Well, the essential idea is that a manifold is a topological space. We have some kind of idea about what that means. It's just a set with a topology that's understood. And to, con to turn this topological space into a manifold, we have to cover it with what are known as uh, charts. So we'll see what all of this terminology means in a second. Um, I'll be loosely using terminology throughout this video that we're going to formalise eventually. But for now, let's just stay uh, vague and intuitive. A lot of these ideas come from a very intuitive place, so it's useful to have these notions in the back of your mind when thinking about these things. So, what is a topological space, first of all? Well, we know a few examples, so the circle, or S1, is a topological space. What do we mean by this? Well, we mean all of the points that are on this circle lie in the set S1. And now we usually think about circles as being round. We know this is just an artefact of how it's embedded in this two-dimensional plane. The circle can be stretched and deformed as much as we like. We could deform it into something that looks like this, and topologically these two things are completely equivalent, or even anything, anything we want really, as long as we don't cut or pinch the circle. These are all equivalent as topological spaces. So we've mentioned this previously, it's the notion of these topological spaces being what's called homeomorphic. So all of these images which I've drawn are homeomorphic as topological spaces. So we're not talking about geometry yet, we're just talking about elements of abstract sets which we realise as topological spaces. Geometry comes much later when we define things like metrics and connections. We'll get there eventually, but for now, all of these shapes are considered to be equivalent. So there are lots of other topological spaces we could construct, such as the sphere, which is a two-dimensional topological space. And as I've drawn it here, this round sphere, we usually understand it as being embedded in some higher dimensional embedding space. So in this case, we've embedded the sphere in R3, three-dimensional real flat space. And we know that R3 as a set or topological space usually carries the standard topology. And now this embedded topological space or embedded manifold this sphere, S2, is going to inherit the topology from the embedding space. So it'll also carry a standard topology. So again, this is the topological space, S2. I've drawn it as the round sphere. I could have drawn some, any kind of three-dimensional blobby object. It would be equivalent to this round sphere because we know that we can continuously deform one into the other without cutting or tearing. And this is the notion of the two spaces being homeomorphic. However, we could have another type of topological space called the torus. This is not homeomorphic to the sphere because it has a hole. There's no way we can continuously deform this space into here we would have to punch a hole in it. So this notion of homeomorphism we're going to see will carry over to manifolds when we're talking about manifolds. In fact, it will be upgraded to the stronger notion of a diffeomorphism. We'll get to all of this eventually. But for now, I want to just talk about what, what we are actually doing when we construct a manifold and why we would want to construct a manifold. 
So all of these topological spaces which I've drawn are perfectly understandable as abstract sets. We can draw them in this way, but we don't really have any way to talk about the points in the set. So the essential idea behind a manifold is that we want to cover we want to cover our topological space in what are known as charts. So these are two pieces of terminology which we'll come back to. But the essential idea is that by covering the space in charts, we give coordinates to the space. So what these charts do is they map a small portion of our manifold into some subset of the real numbers to the dth power, where this d is going to be the dimension of the manifold. So in this case of the torus, it would be R2, since this is a two-dimensional manifold. But what these charts do is they give coordinates to what is known as a coordinate patch in the manifold. So this can be viewed as saying that locally, on a small enough scale, the manifold looks like some subset of the real numbers because we can map it into the real numbers in some particular way. And then we cover the whole manifold in these charts and that allows us to talk about the elements of the set just in terms of um, d-tuples of real numbers or just a list of d real numbers which we understand as being the coordinates on the manifold. So that was a bit of an abstract discussion. Let's consider a, a concrete example. So if you consider the surface of the Earth, which is a sphere, to be our manifold, we know that, or we understand this uh, manifold as being the set of all the possible locations on the Earth. So this is just an abstract set that contains all of the locations on the Earth. And now we know that we can produce now a literal map, a literal map of portions of the Earth, and the collection of all of the maps we call an atlas. That's terminology we'll see shortly. But what is a map? Well, it's essentially just a two-dimensional image of some portion of our original manifold. So this can be viewed as saying, we have our manifold, and we map from this abstract set of locations into some flat two-dimensional image. And we can then, on this two-dimensional image, concretely talk about the points of our manifold. Since we can label the points on our image by coordinates, and we can easily construct these in a, a flat two-dimensional plane. And now you can tell me by giving me the coordinates of any location on the map, I can then translate that back into the original manifold and work out where the original location is. So this is the essential idea of what we do when we construct a manifold, is we have some abstract topological space. It will just be a set of elements and then we map that set of elements in, into a subset of the real numbers, which just allows us to talk about the elements of the, the manifold concretely in terms of lists of numbers or coordinates. So the collection of all the maps is known as the atlas, and now in your atlas there may be portions of the map which overlap. They might be covering the same region in the manifold. Now in order to be a, a good map, they should agree on where the, the charts overlap. So if the maps were drawn accurately enough, you should be able to tear out all the pages from your atlas, and then if you stitch all of the pages back together so that you align all of the over overlapping regions where charts overlap, you should, from that set of flat pages that you ripped out, you should reconstruct a spherical object. So this is, again, emphasising that locally, small regions of our, what might globally be not uh, R2, 
the sphere is obviously not R2, but locally on the sphere we can represent it as a portion of R2. So if you ever meet a flat earther, all you need to do is explain that whilst locally the earth appears to be homeomorphic to R2, globally the structure is wildly different, it is in fact a sphere. So all of the manifolds that I've kind of been talking about loosely here feel very geometrical objects. All of these can be realised as pictures embedded in some kind of real flat space. We will see, however, that there can be many more abstract types of manifold. Anything that's a topological space can be turned into a manifold. So we'll see other examples like uh, a special type of group known as a Lie group which is a continuous group, that can be realised as a manifold. So whilst all of this intuition is easiest to picture in terms of these geometric objects, all of the machinery which we're going to develop can carry over into more abstract uh, situations. So just to summarise then this kind of light informal introduction, a manifold is some topological space, and we feel like we understand what that is, from which we cover or we cover the topological space in these so-called charts, and these charts are viewed as giving coordinates to some local patch of the manifold. And then we should be able to, from the set of all these charts, reconstruct the manifold, all the points in our manifold, by effectively sewing them together in a particular way. <laughs>